and everyone else just gets a shirt room yeah that's that's exactly right everybody else's rooms uh are very simple there is a nightstand and a bed <laughs> and, uh and that's, that's pretty much it um they're not they're not in squalor conditions by any means but they're not super nice like the the linens are like 300 thread like not super great like, <laughs> like thread counts and stuff like that but i mean it's comfortable it's not bad and it doesn't smell bad it doesn't smell bad yeah so. <laughs> and it's a better choice than going back to the safe house because it's not furnished at the safe house yeah yeah, yeah. not super comfortable we got food we gave you warm super <laughs> um uh so I will say let's are, are we cool with skipping a break today if anybody needs to go and go do things they can that's fine and just like just pick a good time for that because if we take a break and come back we will have a 30 minute episode <laughs> or a 30 minute second session so I'm just saying if anybody needs to go right now um that's fine I will give you like the point where that would be a good idea which is coming up soon but where I would normally go to a break here soon but um yeah and maybe just maybe just keep rolling through it um, and if you need to go, you're, you can just drift out as natural. Um, what is everybody else doing uh, with their... Uh... Everybody else kind of like winding down, getting into the rooms. There is yeah. something I'd like to do before the night ends, but I don't want to overstep anyone else. So if anyone sure. else wants to do anything, do that first, guys. You were saying something, Ellie. Nope. Good. Um, okay. Then all you, Seth, go ahead. Um, so as he's going up to his room, he'd kind of probably be going up to the rooms the same time as uh, Bree and Aurelia were heading to their honeymoon suite. Uh, he would probably, like, try to stop them before they get to their room. Just to wanted to, to talk to Bree for a second. Like, sure. uh, hey, um. I'm, so, I'm sorry to bother you guys. Um, Aurelia, do you mind if I borrow Bree for just, just, just one second? It's more up to Bree than it is up to me. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go get cozy in there and debate whether you want to invite Rose later, and I'll be right there. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, <laughs> And I is go into okay? the room. What? Is, is she okay? Oh, I kind of lost you guys back at the last bar. Did she? This was her first night getting shit faced. And it's adorable. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's a fun one. Yeah. Hey, uh, then I won't keep you along because you have a long night ahead of you, uh, one way <laughs> or the other. Um. <laughs> I've been meaning to ask you guys, you know, since you've grown stronger, obviously, has since the last time I've seen you. Mm -hmm. Um, I know we were focusing and trying to think of ways to, to do it, but uh, at the time, there wasn't a way to do it. Um, have you guys been able to figure out how to contact lost people? Um, sort of, kind of. Karon has his workarounds, but we ha we still have to know of them and be able to pull forward like a mental picture of what they look like. So you have to know them. If I know them, you couldn't. No, if you know them, then Ke I would talk to Keron because he's learned and he's hacked it. Fucking brilliant, man. It's just, he, he's finagled his way to do it. Right, the brain thing, like when he saw how I was born, that's gotten stronger, I'm guessing. He, he more talented, more skilled, you know, practice makes permanent, kind of. Okay. He's home just, craft. You know, I, I don't know if you remember, but my parents that I left. Mm -hmm. 
I just would love to know how they're doing. How to see their faces maybe one more time would be great. Oof. Damn. Not to sound. Oh, this. there's no... There's no nice way to say this. Are we really sure looking for more parents is a good idea? Because the last result wasn't great. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. And I think that's why I need to know that they're safe. I, I, I feel like if the truth got out about them, they would be in a much deeper threat. And just to know that they're safe would be amazing. To get to talk to them possibly would be I don't know. I, I'm not coming to you and asking you to work miracles. I just I don't, don't know. know how I know. you guys... I'm just, I'm just saying it's a scary thought. You pushed on the door before, and maybe... Maybe we could find out that they're still alive, but if we push on that door, does that not put you back in the same kind of situation you are in? It puts them in danger. People may try to kill you again. And I would like to keep you this time, perhaps? So... Well, I've learned a thing or two about giving away information freely. Mm. I've had someone, someone to thank for that. And, and, and I don't think I'd give away anything. You, they don't even know who I truly am. They don't even know. She, my mother would have told me. She would have, she would have warned me. So it's best if it's kept that way. But just to just to hear their voices again and to see their faces i don't know i don't know maybe one day you'll be able to but maybe what maybe you also need to think about what happens if you just can't for their own safety what if you never see them again what if we reach out and find out they're dead are you okay learning this it's kind of like a box you know and there's a cat inside and while the cat is inside it is both seen alive and dead so closure mm. closure i think that was what it would bring but i understand okay. i'm sorry to be so sorrow with you i I, I know you're celebrating i just uh i would just love to see them again and with everything going on and everything that's happened it just makes you feel like time's not certain. You never know. I could go to sleep tomorrow and I could have missed the opportunity. Very true. So that's why. That's why. Um, yeah. I, well, I, I would say talk to Karan. He would be your best bet on that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope you sleep really well. And she ruffles Good night, the hair. Sister. Good night. He puts his forehead to hers and tells her goodnight, little sister. And mm. Goes to the uh, other room. And... Yeah, goes to sleep. And uh, Karun and Asher, what did you guys just uh, opt to do? wasn't anything really in particular so. yeah Asher. Is, i mean as far as like where you're staying i just that's all that's what i want to know since don't split the party just pay us over and got a room mm -hmm. okay so each yeah. of you uh each of you got a room um okay um each of you bedding down for the night um winding down after a little bit uh there is a voice that emanates through a run through your mind in the way of sending Quran. It's Elena. It 
Is, is he alive? Things are, things are in motion, not how I expected, but in motion nonetheless. Forgive me for contacting you so late. I think of no one else to contact in this way, but one that could return messages themselves. Anything else? Was that it? That's it, yeah. Okay. Um, Karamu Spawn. Oh, first off, I should probably say, it, it, can you tell definitively that it is Elena that's yeah, sending? Yeah, it was, through, okay, it okay, was okay. Elena, yeah. Um, Elena, it's good to hear from you. You needn't apologize. Um, actually, yes. As surprising as it sounds, yes. I feel as though simple ascending might not be the best medium to speak. There's much that we could probably discuss. Not that I suspect your foresight is beyond information already. I shall speak with Briar to see if we can speak at length better. I don't really have much else as far as birds go, but uh, yes, I'd like to speak with Briar, but uh, I don't know if I'll interrupt them at this point in the evening. <laughs> the first off, is, is Elena going to respond? Um, to so yours was a response to her sending um, after yes. some time, uh, uh, pretty quickly after you feel another one come through um, from her. Um, Well, my foresight is more hindsight now. What I had seen always had included Dominicus. And when he was killed, that was not a part of what I had seen. Not the second time. And so I began to worry that the forces acting against my I had begun to fear that they were winning and so when I felt him return it seems it's playing out more like I had anticipated than I thought. And yes, I would like to talk more. There is something I need for you to do. I see. I can understand. Quite a bit of confusion would have come about it is passing and they're going against what you had already foretold. But your feelings are correct. And as far as if they are having a greater effect at impeding what you are capable of, I suspect there could be more in the background that we're not aware of and I've been concerning myself how much more powerful they've been growing tomorrow night intend on having a long conversation in your dreams I believe Briar can accommodate that and we'll speak at length then No response to that. And Karun would not 
not bother anyone else this evening. Um, but that would be a thing to bring up in the morning. Dominicus, as you wind down for a little bit, a voice emanates in your head. Dominicus. Welcome back. It seems your role in all of this still has some hope. Good night. Anybody uh, else? What are your guys' plans for, for the night? Um, uh, I think Rowan, if we're all in the same hallway, I'd like to take the one furthest away from everybody else. Um, I'm going to take a watch, if you will, down the hallway, making sure no shady people come up the hallway. If they do, I'll see them from a desk. Sure. Um, uh, just over the course of, of the night, th uh, through out doing your watch, um, just uh, drunk people going up and down, um, getting into their rooms and uh, all that, or just over the course of the night, nothing seems out of the ordinary. At first, something kind of like catches your eye and you see like somebody uh, kind of like waddles over to a room with uh, some, somebody else like kind of hanging on their shoulder and they kind of like they laugh um, and then goes to open uh, a door which you know to be uh, one of your friends and not uh, not an empty room like goes to open it and like it's like locked and tries to move the handle and kind of like looks at it like oh, I know it no I want that. That, that, 10 we're all uh, next to 11 that's the one yeah. it goes oh that's not it sorry knocks on it <laughs> the, the uh woman on his arm just like almost dies with laughter her her uh like snorts while she's laughing kind of uh and then he kind of like tuck, uh like tries to like sneak away uh like oh sorry I'm not trying to be that asshole kind of thing uh and then makes his way over to the other room he tries that door and he's like oh <laughs> looks at her and she's like <gasps> and starts to laugh again and then he finally opens it up he's like ah, nah. he's like, yeah. <laughs> and they make their way in <laughs> have a safe night <laughs> but yeah it would, it, Rowan would only do it for four hours out of the, the night and then he'd get his full rest perfect yeah in the fifth hour an assassin comes and kills all your friends um the night goes by unimpeded. <laughs> uh, up to you guys. What what you guys are are doing in in your uh, room? If you if you want more shenanigans, there is room for it. So <laughs> up to you. <laughs> yeah, I want you to go into graphic detail. <laughs> we remove Rosa's arm. I'm kidding. <laughs> <It's just laughs> you're expecting one. You actually, <laughs> it's just, you actually kill her. It's, <laughs> She's a swizzle uh, stick. A pool noodle. Cruel dreams. Uh, what did you say? What? I'm pretty sure we just start the morning, right, crew? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We before we get to that, um, as you wind your night down, um, in the middle of the night, uh, you find yourself, Briar, once again in that familiar uh, empty space, 
for a moment, um, this, uh, this area that then forms around you, um, familiar as you've seen, the area whirls out to Zir, makes his way, um, to communicate with you. It erupts from around this empty space. Zir? Once again, as you step out into that circle with the two chairs facing each other, he steps out from behind a pillar and then just kind of crosses his arms and leans on that pillar. Having a good night. Well, I mean, not as good as you think. So it was great, but I mean, she was drinking, so it was what do you want, Zir? <laughs> I what don't can want I do anything. For you? At this oh, point, no. it is beyond my control. Yes, but are you talking about me or more so yourself? This, uh, me coming to your dream state, uh, I, I, uh, it just happens now. So. I have nothing. I can end this now, though. I don't think it is the time. You are not in uh, any state to grow. I but am it not is good to see you nonetheless. I hope you have a good night. I hope you are rested and maybe another time. Maybe another time. Good night. Good night, dear. All fades around. And then... Morning comes. Ron will probably be the first one down getting breakfast. There uh, still seems to be some drinking, and as if it is still nighttime, it's kind of weird to wake up to like the the partying still kind of going on, but to a lesser degree, like it's, you still see people that were there from earlier that night, and they're like maybe on their sixth wind, <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of like so halfway there, very zombified, but still have it, trying to have the time of their life. Um, but uh, there is still it's cleared out enough where, where people are smart enough to, to get some rest proper um you guys can all corral around and and get yourself some some breakfast um buddy comes down um in his robe uh his his uh um not in like an unprofessional manner it's more of just like kind of to be to be funny and to, to be homey kind of thing um but he, he starts working wraps an apron around his uh his uh sleepwear robe and uh starts getting things prepped for for the day um he's you can tell he's passionate about his his business and and uh loves what he does very uh, simple life that, that uh fulfills him um and uh, Rose is, is not up quite yet. Um, but yeah, um, there are other workers there that are able to provide you guys um, kind of a, a simple breakfast. Um, uh, for that, it would just be um, just a, a couple copper each for each person that wants to kind of, uh, partake in a meal and some beverages and stuff. Um, but then you, you may all corral around the table. And uh, if you want to just say and say I tell them what happened or if you want to elaborate on it on any way with Karan exposition go ahead that's yeah I, I'd, I'd you know I'd go up to Bree and tell her that uh, you know I didn't want to interrupt your evening last night but uh, Elena reached out to me and I think that uh, she would be one due for a longer conversation well, 
Have you experienced any side effects at all whatsoever? No? No, I mean, there is that lingering, you know, if you're there and you're so infatuated with it, that concern, but aside from remembering how vivid it was with Kazrak, I can't say anything explicitly. Why, are you, are you experiencing something? Yes, we'll talk about it once I figure out what the fuck is going on. Um, <laughs> Concerns me. I. You might be okay. I think you're fine. I just I have a lot to digest. Um, but yes, we can dream you tonight. Um, you know, I feel like with the dreams, I don't feel like I want to stay there. I like our reality much better. So maybe it just hits a little different. Perhaps, but if you're the one that's experiencing issues with lingering side effects, and you don't have that, that's concerning. Yes, we'll talk. Yeah. I have an idea of something that could help, maybe. But I... Elena needs our help now, too. It sounds like she's less sure of things. Yeah. Before. Okay, so when we go to sleep, bam, it's all you. I will make sure I do not murder everybody with super big magic. Just for you. Always appreciate that extension. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, let me know soon to talk about your issues. Mm, yeah. Is this conversation happening privately between you two, or is this like around the table while we're eating it's breakfast? Probably like would have been like getting towards more private direct. Yeah, I wasn't like broadcasting it to everybody. Okay. Um, well, Dom would probably approach you, Ron, and. Hey, uh, last night, right before I was about to go to sleep, um,. I could have swore that I heard Elena's voice in my head. Uh, have you guys talked to her lately? Is there anything I need to know with that? I quite literally did. What did she say? Did you respond to her or did you just hear? No. Her? I I just heard her. I wasn't sure if I could or couldn't. I don't know. I, I didn't know I could. Um, she said um, I still have a part to play. And that she's glad I'm alive again. Um, well, if it was off-putting, my apologies there. I did speak with her. She spoke to me my head, my mind ascending. So I suspect you could have responded, yes. Um, hopefully that didn't concern her, but she should also know that she did connect with you, even if you didn't say anything. But she is, she was curious and surprised. Much like myself and I'd say everyone here. So you guys really have gained the ability to talk to people from unknown locations distance. If the person is known, we have, yes, absolutely. But the sending is no different than before. Although there is another that's quite a bit more profound. Though I don't think, suspect that you'll be communicating with anyone in that capacity anytime soon, maybe. What do you mean? Well, I was just speaking with Bry about these communications with Lena, and she's going to cast a spell she's familiar with that allows me to speak for longer durations whilst someone is sleeping. So a dreamscape type 
of meeting. But she can do that. Uh, it's new magic. It's something that is honestly her and myself are discovering quite a bit about and not something we use we look to use regularly we don't know if there's any ramifications but in a situation like this I think Elena's do that effort I used it to speak with Kazrak once you could use me as a guinea pig I mean, I'm not looking to experiment in search of problems, but why would you offer yourself as a guinea pig? I mean, haven't you have enough critical life well, events already? It'd be nice to see Elenia again and try to figure out what plan she has with me if she's got one. And to be honest, I don't know. I just have a feeling. It seems like you've done it once and you've got nothing really bad, so maybe it's a near mean thing. Maybe if it's a human, it's a different effect. You know, there's not really a way to know unless you do. I... You know, I, I do have the ability to give some of my magic too. Maybe I could make the spell less or take less on her to cast it. I wouldn't just want to help, Karan. I've been I, gone for so long. I know. And I'm sure probably one of the biggest things is to getting right back to where you are. But I don't want to see you rush into something that could potentially put you at risk. Maybe I am being defensive there, but there is definitely a sound logic in you speaking with her. So there very likely could be that chance, yes. You might speak with her at length in the same way that I will tonight, but I won't say that there aren't potential side effects. I can only speak for myself directly, of course, but even if there's nothing lingering after, the event itself is very profound. You, outside of how illogical the environment might seem at times it is so vividly real and can be so emotionally satisfying that i worry someone might not want to leave and we don't know what the effects of that could be but well i i'll tell you if you guys do decide to let me help if there ever is a moment where i don't feel like myself you pull me out i walk away and i won't touch it again but i just want to help however it is i know and it i i know that it's my own i'm being subjective here it was so hard to lose you a second time. I don't know. Even if it's not in death, there's other ways to lose a person. I honestly don't know how it would hit to lose you again. So forgive me that. But I know you're well intended. And I will do everything that I can to give you the support and strength to do what you need to do. It's like Elena told you. You have your part to play. I hope that we'll be side by side the whole time and beyond from here on out. Thank you, brother. That means the world to me. As he pats him on the shoulder and kind of goes back to sitting down and eating whatever breakfast is at the table.
Breakfast is uh, is modest. It is enjoyable though. Um, uh, quite uh, quaint, but everything is like a pretty good standard compared to like some of what you've experienced in Wafton. Um, more of the people. Uh, it's still a little bit rowdy, but it's kind of a dull roar enough that it's not uh, distracting. Um, then for a moment, um, Asher, you yourself begin to feel a uh, voice start to emanate through your mind. Once again, a voice that of Elena, immediately recognizable. Good morning. You can tell the others I look forward to our conversation. But things are moving faster than I anticipated, and I, as always, want to get ahead of it. Listen very closely. There is a man who lives where you are currently staying. On the land side, off the docks, a small farm. You will go there and you will ask him about soil. Ath Goyanadra. He will know what you are referring to. And as you learn more of that, it will lead us. <laughs> At least laugh through your face. <laughs> um, it will lead us. The more questions, but I believe what will be the answers for to what is to come in regards to Asher Asterion and his companion. Soyol Ath Goyanadra. And he'll repeat the exact same thing back to her <laughs> no say so it, david say it. <laughs> you have to fucking say it david <laughs> and he'll like look to the party and be like there's a and he'll go give the brief rundown of someone near the dock side apparently elena's reaching out what do we say i'm sorry how what was that soil goth all day. Soyol Goyanatra. Is that Elvish? It is. Uh, it seems to be the old Elvish once again. Yeah. It's like uh, you know von Silath. It's that yeah. that. Like Sylvan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sylvan. We really once need a, to work once on again that a dead language. Yeah, <laughs> a dead language that comes up a lot. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's like Latin. Damn it. <laughs> so, Elena's contacted two of us so far. Three, three of us. Three of, know about three of us. Yep. That's, that's what Karun would say, three of us. No. Oh, okay. She spoke to me last night, and I'll be speaking with her at length tonight. Sounds like we need to go to this farm before whatever meeting that is. Yes. Soil Ath Goyanatra. Can we infer its translation? Um, so, um, the soil, soil, um, with its roots vaguely roll in 
roll a history or an uh yeah probably it would be a history check i would say for that mm. can i help sure or anybody your... can make a check i guess too anyone <laughs> speak sylvan as well ah 19. Cool um, part of the route seems like it could be um, like through, I guess, just different different, different translation, translations where it vaguely is similar to other words um, would be akin to, um, let me think, um, part of it has a root in life. to what exact context or anything like that, then it's uh, not exactly clear. Unless you knew the, the full Sylvan. Can I... Um, or if, do we determine this doesn't work that way? I think we may. If I cast tongues and someone says it... No, that would but work. But if I do... Oh, okay. No, it would work because if they say it, even if they don't know what it means, they, I mean, technically they said it, right? It. So, mm -hmm. well, yeah, yeah you would be able to understand it. They can just say it no. out loud. Um, it, it wouldn't work for loud. reading it. Um, so if you didn't, yes, like, audible. if you're trying to read it and you weren't getting the pronunciation right, I guess, of things, but he was given the proper exact pronunciation to be able to read that. So, um, yeah, um, if you would like to do that, you may. Yes, I, sh I shall. I will. I'll just. I guess I'll just cast it on myself. It's easy enough. Bam. And, um, this, can I just say it? Soil, Ath, Goyanatra, or does someone um, else have to say it? Easy enough. Somebody says it. Um, the translation would be restoration or resurrection of, um, the word Goyanadra does not have a translation. It seems to be a proper name, but uh, none that you recognize. Resurrection of Goyanadra. Who is Goyanadra? That's not a name that we've heard yet. She did say it wouldn't make sense, but we will answer some questions and bring up some more So long as it makes sense to this mysterious man. Do we want everyone to go? Or some people to hang back just in case? I don't think that... It sounds more like a conversation than anything else. But also... probably shouldn't split up seems like every time we split up one of us is in a bar fight I had to agree here technically we're undercover we split ourselves and there is someone who's aware and watching that just makes them an easier target and besides you know we would want uh, people to case the exterior while we're there having our conversation probably be best if we all go okay. what's the plan we're all going yep um uh making your way out of there you see um still that mist kind of settling over the docks um, the, uh, lights now have been, uh, dimmed as the morning has come and the, the sunlight has, uh, um, has peeked over the, uh, over the grounds and starts to illuminate this. You see some of the boats still out there in the, uh, or not maybe freshly out there now in the early morning and some people, um, fishing things out of the, uh, out of the dockside and off the edges, um, you see a, a row of people working to hoist uh, different things up and pulling up different treasures and 
Um, you see a off towards the uh, entrance from the way that you guys came as you come in um, where you had first initially met uh, Tipley. You see there is a crew of people working there um, and underneath a blanket you see just two little feet sticking out from under it. One is covered in a boot and the other is barefoot just underneath a uh, just underneath a cloth covering up um, as you see them kind of like somberly gathered around um, kind of discussing the uh, the count of the night as you guys walk past uh, they kind of like eye you and give kind of like a a grimaced smile and kind of a, a half nod like somber somber about it but then they they take that cloth and try to put it over the the single boot and barefoot that lay on the dock does that mean he, he's dead like they're covering seems, up a dead body seems to have deceased in the middle of the night in the way that in the way that can happen <laughs> was was that tipley i want to look at the the shoe yeah it seemed to be that was the the kind of signature one barefoot and one one boot still on I do you, um, do you know the fellow? Yeah. He showed us around. When we got here. Ah, oh, well. I, sorry for your loss then, yeah? Um, we'll, uh, we'll take care of him from here. And you, uh, does anybody know what happened? Um, Scooped him up this morning. Um, seems to have gone a wee bit over, and uh, it happens sometimes. Can't can't yeah. catch can't catch them all, you know. Before before it's too late. And well, uh, he had he had, he had too much to drink. It seems like it. Uh, probably what the case. Come on. Dong kind of whispering this to him. Can you do a check to see quickly if he did die from drowning? You, some kind of medicine, man, yeah? Right. I mean, we scooped him up out face down in the water. I mean, he was... seemed to be probably drowned. I doubt he was, um... Uh, I doubt it was, the, I mean, in a way, yeah, the alcohol is what caught him, but... Drowning, can, that'll get you. Uh, I can take a look to see, you know, water in the lungs, or if there's anything aside from... You know, if it's alcohol poisoning that ultimately did him in, then I can't test that. If he was drunk and fell in and drowned, then water in the lungs, I can... I can do a baseline. At well, least. I, I mean, guys, like, he was already drunk when we met him. He was, yes. It is the way of things here. Outside of finding any suspicious openings that shouldn't be on the body, it probably is just that. An unfortunate incident and a tragic loss. But I'll, I'll roll a mess and check to see if there's anything interesting. Yep. It is, uh, 30. Um, 17 plus... Yeah, 
uh, with that low roll, um, you <laughs> uh, able to determine that it was it was most likely uh, that he was just intoxicated and fell off and, and drowned. And just wasn't able to like, partially blacked out, kind of, um, and then just drowned in it. Fortunately, or still unfortunate, it seems to be just a accident based upon his inebriation. He fell in and couldn't get himself out. Another day in Lofton. Well, I appreciate how... your um, your condolences, and we offer ours as well. Uh, do you have a name? My my name. Did he have a name? Did he have a name. Tipley. Tipley. Oh, like all oh, right, yeah. Um. Okay, yeah, it's probably from the Tiplin family then. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, we'll let them know. I'm not. Not sure if they know. Um. Do you guys do what kind of services do you guys do? It doesn't cost anything. Well, we put them up on the boat, and and then usually a few nights later we'll have the service. Usually just the kind of like the jewel, pretty simple and all that, but um, usually pretty quiet. During we try to pick the quietest parts of the night or the morning and have it then. Finally, lay the bodies to rest. And the life that they lived, the rest that they couldn't find here, maybe they find it there. Thank you. They just kind of like uh, look at each other and sigh and uh, nod to you and then just carry on your way. Make your way off out of the off the dock side. There is um, some more kind of typical uh, homes that are not built out on the docks and all that. And then there is um, some places which have a bit of land um, that is uh, to be harvested looks like they are preparing for their uh, winter um, season planting whatever they can plant at that point um, and so they begin um, you see different people out in the in the fields you make your way out towards uh, a different little homestead kind of following where it uh, following where it feels right you stumble upon a field that seems like it's been freshly tilled and ready for planting you see uh, two small figures out in that field working at the moment um, you see one, a little girl who, uh, gnomish in stature, the man as well, seems to be older, using a walking stick that is, uh, serves two purposes. One is, is, is quite a bit of a support and a crutch and a, cr and a cane for him. Um, and then her kind of trailing behind as he pokes little holes in the dirt with the stick and then hobbles over to the next one and pokes little holes in the dirt kind of separating them out evenly just hand planting you see she runs behind him and plants some seeds and then um he uh kind of tilts up and looks at you has this uh just gnomish age behind his eyes um kind of looks up at you and trails each of you and stops for a moment nods and then continues to 
plant, but then like every now and then kind of peeks his eyes up towards you and then plants in the stick and right behind him, the little uh, gnomish girl seems to be probably uh, either his granddaughter or his daughter even, um, just the way that, that gnomes age. Asher will walk up, and that seems pretty close to um, what Elena was referring to. It has the energy about it, yeah. He'll walk up to him and be like, she gave. Good morning, and he'll rec recite the, the saying. He kind of uh, stops and uh, stands there for a little bit. Looks down at the dirt and like uh, the work that they've done. Um, the little girl finally like catches up to him and uh, standing like right behind him realizes that like she can't go any further unless he goes as any further, even though she has like a, a stick of her own that she holds. Um, let me uh, pop that up there. Um, him with his, uh, hair kind of like slicked back, um, almost kind of like mane-like with these sideburns and this, um, white mustache that curls up, very bright green eyes that he has, and then her with, um, her bright green pigtails that she has, and they both have very just, uh, simple clothes to, to work in the field, her and kind of like a, a simple little dress, and then him and his own kind of robes that they just, uh, wear warm enough to, um, keep them warm in the morning hour, but also cool enough to be, uh, to, um, keep them uh, cool when the sun comes out to to start beating down on them um she finally like looks over at him he kind of looks back up at you and she kind of gathers his attention father i'm i'm tired of this he turns to her and then back to you that's all right let us just go. Let us just go inside. So you'll ask Goyanatra. I've got many stories for that. Many stories. We were told that you would be able to tell us what that means and while you tell us what that means, will you sign my book, please? What? W what book is this? It has Delvius Lorem's name on it. How do you know I am? <laughs> right, well, this is no come. place to do it. Come in this way, then. He hobbles very slowly towards their little, uh, little homestead. She, uh, walks kind of arm in arm with him. Oh, travelers, I've had my day of it. How exciting. So you love Goyanadra. All right. Let me gather my thoughts and rest my bones makes his way over to the house and invites you in and uh it's built for gnomes you uh most of you except those who are five foot four have to very much hunch over it's not designed for much any other guests you guys are just good enough you don't have to you still almost feel like you need to hunch over a little bit but it's that that small i, I apologize for all the lowness of, of the hut. It's not designed for, for all that, yeah? You would think with all the fringe that I've made around the world, I would... I would accommodate it for all the tall folk that I've met. But such is the way and what we know and what is comfortable. We always return oh, to some form of normal. You know, I'm about to have my fifth expedition. 
you see uh, the little girl next to him. She kind of, kind of just ducks her head a little bit, like kind of like sad, um, just a little bit of somber that you can pick up uh, from that. I finally plan to do what I've always intended, which is to go to an entire different continent and, and r r write books upon that as well. I just need to get over this crick in my back right now. And maybe a few more naps in me, then I'll be good to go. My fifth expedition. Anyways, you come asking Sawyer to ask Goyanandra. Yes, I... Not sure what the... None of us are really sure what that means. Oh, yes, the resurrection of Goyanandra. Goyanandra was... Uh, it was an old name for a being. Now it would be more known as Gehendra. It used to be called Goyanadra. That was what his, his first name was at that time. Back when the... Uh, from, from what I recall from the stories, uh, it was the Raven. Even they had a name. I'm unsure of it now, but... Uh, yes, the raven and, and Mother Raven. The Neramin, they were, they were a part of that. I learned a lot of that history from them. And they were in council and convening at that time about how much of that should be released to, to all the others. I feel so terrible that I don't have all of the accommodations that that I would like to have for meeting adventure such as yourself. I can offer some teas. The morning is young. Teas are good for the morning. Uh, Delius, I just have a question. Yeah. Okay, so your first expedition, it covered like the halflings and the wood elves, and we are super good to you. And then the third one, you covered the tieflings. Oh, and a little yeah. bit of the orcs from the first one. And then on the fourth one, you did tieflings and orcs, but you don't talk about your second expedition. Uh, my second expedition was um, where I gathered a different bit of information. And that. The, the second expedition's where I. They start to run together. That is when I believe I visited this the Sun Kingdom. They they were for the second the the the, the 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 first time I went there, which was during my second expedition. They were very kind to me. It was after that one that they they went whatever they went through, and they weren't so welcome to to outsiders, which to be fair, I was. It was the new king. Oh, right. I s kind of skipped the sun elf part. Well, I mean, fuck them, right? Right. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. I'm kidding. Fuck it's sun called... elf. It is a joke. She looks uh, around. I... Yeah. <laughs> See, the, uh, the little green-haired girl just kind of snickers. Add <laughs> <Cool. laughs> that, that one to your repertoire, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> Rowan's gonna let out a heavy sigh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, I um I didn't get around to as much as I wanted to in, in the second uh, expedition. That's where I explored most of the northeast. I I, I discovered the I discovered the, the sun elves there and then I uh I I finally got to um Finally got to meet some of the, the Goliaths that were up there, which I'm sure are uh, totally different different nowadays. They, they, I believe, from what I recall, the orcs that, uh, that traveled through 20 years ago managed to settle up there and, and got comfortable with each other, <laughs> so to say. And, and they became 
It is fascinating how something like that happens, but it became an entire new breed of half orc Goliaths. Uh, yes. Not met any of them, though. Um, maybe on my way out, I'll see some. Look at uh, Briar and telepathically speak to her. Should we? He seems. He seems like there might be a bit of lucidity that could be at issue there. But should we in bring him out to meet the others? Should we be forward with him beyond what we're talking about specifically? The soil. Hey, Delvius. Mm, yes. We want to talk about some sensitive information that's maybe dangerous. Uh, how do you feel about your family being close by to hear all of that? Or do we need to be private? Oh, this here is Penny. Penny Lorum. She, she's my daughter. She's all I've got. Penny, do you value your life? <laughs> Well, I suppose, um, kind of. <laughs> no, I'm not worried about it. Uh, she will carry on my legacy. This one has that heart of adventure, unfortunately. So anything that I can hear, she can hear as well. All right, then we're good to go. I'm going to just have a sit now. And make that tea. He starts to very wobbly shake and pours the tea. But anyways, what is it that you wish to know about the restoration of Hendra? What is it? How could one potentially stop it? Whatever information, honestly. I have my opinions, <laughs> so uh, let me get my history straight. They have, how do you say, like a manuscript. Imagine you really, really don't want somebody to do something and anybody to ever learn how to do something because it would be terrible if anybody ever did and so you specifically write out how to do the thing this is exactly what we don't want somebody to do yes i'm sorry but that's pretty stupid if you ask me that <laughs> it's very asinine but they did this anyway they did this anyway um, courtesy of your kind, non offense, Mr. Naramine. Um, Thank you're you. kind of lovely. I've been there. Lovely people they are. But, um, Thank you. to be fair, they, um, they kept it under lock and key until I think somebody wise enough realized, hey, maybe we should destroy this manuscript, the restoration of Gehendra. Um, and I so believe. It should have been, yes, but I mean, the idea and the thoughts still remain I, enough for me to have known what it is. So I suppose until I pass, it's still in my brain as well. But it's just simply, uh, I think it lasted long enough that it became common knowledge. One of those things, it was written down and uh, unleashed into the aether and then got picked up and traveled around. So um, I'm not sure who all knows about it, but it, it's almost to some mm, historical sense, common knowledge, but it is it is the route in which Gehendra would be revived. And obviously there are different cultists and others who would seek to bring him back for whatever destructive reasons. And, if, Do you seek to bring him back? Because I'll have you know, I will beat you with my stick if you no. do such things. In fact, we wholeheartedly support you 
beating anyone who seeks to bring Gahantra back with your stick, but no. In well, fact, we let me at so them. He <laughs> pulls himself up with his stick and, like, starts to shake it. No one said I have my tea. And he sits back down. <laughs> I you support you beating people with your stick just, you know, willy-nilly. <laughs> sounds like fun. Um, I have a question for you. Do you know Zeltazir? Yes, yes, I worked with him there for a little while. Um, yes. Can you tell me about him? Zeltazir was a good man. He was a good man from what I know. He had a lot of controversy surrounding him, but I have a good sense about people. And this man, he was good. He, um, he was troubled. That is for sure. He was burdened with a lot, but, um, he was, he meant well. He met a lot of people with, uh, with similar minds who, who didn't use it in the way that he did or tried to. Mm. Okay. But from my impression of him, a good man. Asher's Anybody gonna... else any questions? He kind of smiles into his tea, just kind of like wobbling a little bit. I do love Asher's to tell stories. So. Gonna go over to Quran and just kind of quietly whisper to him, like, Why did Elena want us to talk to this man? More now that we know it's Gehendra, but believe that there's more that we can gather um at worst at least we know that there might be a manuscript or some kind of tome of text in my homelands that could more explicitly state what's transpiring and how we might be able to stop it the other thing that i was curious about is that he is actually very very uh, he has the imprints of everything that he's experienced. But he's experienced so much in his time that there might be fragments that are hard for him to recall. I could try reading, detecting his thoughts and perhaps just pulling out the information we need, but as soon as Koinotra was translated to Gehendra, there's no question that there's pertinence in being here and what information lies in this man's head. I think the information to out is going to be an issue, but I think you might be able to handle that. That's what I'm thinking. I can try to detect thoughts, provided he would be willing. And uh, if not, then... And perhaps still, we have to go back to the Moon Lakes for myself. First time for everyone else here. Fairly certain. But I would like to try and see what might be locked away in there. Sounds like we're all on the same page then. Run would uh, probably want to ask. Oh, I guess it will play it out. Delvius. I think it goes without saying that we all very much respect the work that you have done in chronicling the history of all of us, our peoples, our backgrounds. The issue with Gehendra is something that is of a great pertinence to us, and we would like to be able to make certain my and I'll kinda of like gestured myself as a narrow mean like to make certain that Whatever has existed has been destroyed. And if someone were to be trying, how we might be able to stop it with your permission. I'd like to be able to pick your brain. I'm all ears and mouth. <laughs> well, I don't know what else you may have learned about the Neramine, but there's some things that even I have learned. That's not typical. You may not need your mouth. 
If only you will grant me the permission to delve. Delve into your brain. <laughs> yes, go, go ahead. I grow tired of speaking sometimes, too. I, I just grow tired in general. He looks over at Penny and smiles at her as he kind of like shakes and she kind of like smiles back. But this kind of like somber um, seeing her father in this this kind of state. By all so means. He's, he's consenting then. I would like to be able to detect thoughts, but we're looking at time. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> um, yep. Depends exactly where you're trying to get, but. Um, I would, well, so Karun's goal would be to gather whatever information he could. I mean, you know, if, if this man is, you know, so far on in years, he's not been inside don't know if navigating, actually pulling up memories, things of that nature are going to be an issue or not, but he wants to find out everything that he can about Dandra. This particular tome that they shouldn't have written down, that they did write down and they should have destroyed, but they may not have, all that, so. Yes. Yes, the, the restoration of Gehendra Essentially, they wrote down the entire recipe for how to bring him back. Brilliant idea for all the cultists who need something like that. And so, it entails bringing all of his, uh, not to be morbid, but organ relics and putting them back together performing the ritual on the the obsidian tablet and uh, from there it will be uh, something that should be performed in the in the Neramine waters in the moon lake well that will serve as the portal and the entrance way for Gehendra to emerge but only after all of the relics have been assembled and and conferred into the tablet of obsidian. And how many relics are there? Oh, I don't know that bit. Um, hmm. You have the. You have the. Hmm. It must be four, maybe. That's what the slots are on the uh, on the tablet, I believe. I want to say four. No, it's five. It is five. He now uh, now recalling. Um, you see, kind of like in in his this detect thoughts the image of that tablet, um, this obsidian stone tablet with five different inserts to kind of like almost basketball sized ones um and then another uh almost basketball sized one below uh, um or another like basketball sized one above that and then a small um a small one that is kind of shaped in in a gemstone shape So we know that we can see the tablet and you can yes the yes, orifices. So you see that kind of yeah, like yeah. description description yeah. But don't doesn't don't know specifically what these organs are aside from one oddity that is the gemstone. That's you know not not a standard. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of tool. not organ shaped, which is what feels strange. It feel it's almost uh, yeah. almost a diamond shape, but kind of an elongated diamond um, that appears there. Um, Yes, that, yeah. those are the ones that would fill the slot. I believe one is, uh, at least, it is the Black Heart. And then I believe they removed the, his brain. And then I believe they removed 
well, what they basically called what was his essence, the uh, the third eye of Gehendra, as it was referred to. Not necessarily an eye, but an eye of sorts. Something that represents a yes. metaphysical component. To Gemstone of some sort in his... But yes. Grunslaving in a bit of a a bit, kind of like thinking. I wish to go lay down for a bit, and Penny immediately rushes over to, to him and kind of helps him up. He, uh, She takes him over to the, lay on the couch, and uh, he just kind of like eases down into that. Um, she kind of kneels down beside him and sits sits beside him and kind of just like faintly paints his hand or pets his hand and then he just kind of drift, drifts off she uh very concerned looks at him and then turns to you guys and with these same big green eyes and her little uh, pigtail green hair looks over at you guys and a little bit of tears streaming down her face. I've listened to my father for m most of my life and I can be of help as well. I don't have all the experience but I've heard his stories and I've listened. And I'm a good listener. With that, anything that you need, I can be of assistance as well. She kind of s smiles through the tears. Um, Penny, is it? Yes. I'm going to lean down next to her. I can't help but get the impression that your father felt like he missed out on his second expedition with the Sun Elves. Um, I don't know that he feels like he missed out on it, but um, he enjoyed his time there. That was one of the main places that he stayed during the second expedition, so... I could go I'm into more of that I, as well. If... I forget. Uh, There's more of his time back, but hopefully I can speak with him in regards to that, with the sun elves. Yes, he just, I think, just needs to rest for now. <laughs> and Rowan's going to step back. And with that, we'll end the session. <laughs> um... <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Um, we're going to stick around for uh, a raid. Show somebody some love, so stick around. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. And we will see you in a few weeks for the main campaign, or maybe we'll do some one-shots or something. I will keep you posted, so join the Discord to get all of that information, exclamation point Discord and exclamation point socials, get all of those things, and you can do all the things. We'll be right back. Goop-a-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo.